All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. I sent out this initial agenda, uh, and basically, I wanted to spend majority of time to discuss the next steps. It it sounds like we we're figuring out some structure at hand, and the admin t team and the uh, program management <laughs> team is working hard to to bring that structure together. Uh, but I would like to start with the uh, basically. I'm not sure how many of you have reviewed the final uh, scoring document, but basically, the next steps are. Uh, you know, focusing on the top four tasks that we've identified. Uh, they're very diverse from geography, sounding like an easy one to solve, and that will potentially benefit us as a group in terms of figuring out the process even further. Risk factors being obviously more complex. But yeah, like there are a couple of documents that um, admin team is pulling together in terms of organizing this effort. I'll probably uh, have Daniel and Steve lead this conversation and on the process of how we are selecting these principal investigators, basically lead uh, researchers for each of the teams, uh, and what's the next step. Daniel, do you want to go ahead? Or okay, um, I guess I'll. Um, let me jump in here. So uh, I'm only going to take a couple minutes because we have a lot on uh, this agenda. We, uh, there's, a, there's a large team with a lot of valuable contributors, um, so it's great to see the effort, uh, but uh, we do need some sort of organization to make sure that um, all this work that we're doing can fit together into, into some cohesive output. Uh, and that folks have an opportunity to kind of focus on certain areas where they think they can contribute the most. Um, we're kind of thinking about something along uh, this, these lines here where um, we have a number of uh, teams uh, that are broken into three broad categories. We have a, a program administration team um, and there's you know, various groups within there that are handling aspects of just coordinating the activities of all the contributors. Uh, then at the bottom of the chart, we have a uh, methodological foundation set of teams. And those are broadly broken into the machine learning teams and the domain expertise teams. Uh, of course, they need to coordinate because that, the outputs of those two teams uh, need to fit together into the ultimate output of the group. Uh, and then there's subgroups uh, within there. Um, the, and here's some potential ways to break those groups up. But I think what we would like to do is see volunteers to try and coordinate the activities along these two dimensions and help us figure out how to then create sub teams within um, within those top two broad groups of uh, building a uh, methodology foundation that we can use to address the tasks and then uh, the four tasks as Artur said uh, that we're focused on first are the geo the risk uh, the transmission and the vaccines tasks the Kaggle competition had six more, which we may get to, but we'd kind of like to get this framework working for four and then figure out if we're going to tackle the other ones. And then we'll be then dedicated teams to each one of those tasks to take the input from our foundational analytical teams and apply it to the specific question that's being um, asked in the task. So I'm going to kind of leave it there. If anybody has any comments right now, feel free to jump in. Otherwise, we can kind of take it offline and via Slack or via a separate Zoom meeting, we can discuss just how to best organize the group. This is great. Okay, well, we'll uh, you know, please join the program management channel uh, in the Corona Y group and uh, we'll get you involved if you wanna be a part of, kind of you know, helping us set up some sort of organizational structure. Yeah, so we're currently severely understaffed in terms of non-technical talent, so uh, we've got a couple of people that are helping. Tina is helping. Maya is helping. I think this uh, new guy, Munitz, something, he is actual project manager, and he will be super helpful uh, to organize all of this, which was the connection of Brendan, I, I believe, that joined us yesterday. And yes, if you have management skills in general, please join prog program management uh, channel for us to put uh, this structure together. I think we'll, we are kind of agreeing or in the progress of agreeing to create separate Slack channels for each of the teams, meaning uh, every, every 
every one of those four tasks will have each uh, in individual Slack channel. And we are kind of thinking about creating uh, separate Trello boards for uh, those specific uh, Slack channels because there will be a lot of moving pieces and we're not comfortable uh, having all of that flow through the, the main board. So we'll probably keep that main board as the you know, rough uh, idea brainstorming stage, but once the task is formalized, has team members assigned and has key pieces, we'll create a Trello board and basically try to create structure in there. Or get Hub. Yep, and GitHub, this is kind of uh, jumping into the next uh, piece of discussion, the, the core blockers and very important uh, past tasks that we're struggling to accomplish, even though they kind of sound very easy, like establishing the GitHub uh, research pipeline, just making sure that we're efficient in terms of collaboration when it comes to the actual technology pieces. It seems like we all have ideas, but we're hesitant to proceed and establish the structure because someone, uh, because everyone thinks that there is someone who knows a little bit more and can help us with this. I believe, and what I've learned through the past couple of days, that at least some structure is better than none. So if you feel that you're confident at this piece, of uh, the project, uh, please jump in into the Trello card about the GitHub research pipeline and just, um, you know, go ahead and let us know how, how to do it. GitHub will be primarily a source of uh, resolution for technical issues um, and Trello will be the, the kind of the aggregate um, <coughs> informational layer uh, on top of the, of the task and the team. Actually, let me chime in here really quick. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so my name is Anton, and for the last couple of days, I was uh, talking like directly one-on-one -on -one, uh, with people who already seems to start doing something. So they were either already forming a team or they were active on Slack posting some, you know, kind of like the steps that they're looking to do and things like that. And from speaking with them, essentially, the core blocker was exactly what you, Arthur, just described is people think that there is somebody else who knows more, so they're kind of like seeking for validation. And uh, I think like in the next couple of days, what we would see is this already formed team start adding to like GitHub repo. We already had one team that simply joined us. So there were like three people. And they just simply, they're kind of separate. Do, they're doing their own thing, but they were already merging to our GitHub repo, et cetera. And I think we will have more of that soon. Just simply, like speaking yesterday with a couple of people, I encourage them to start, you know, Google design doc. Again, if they have code, maybe do a GitHub repo for that, et cetera. So from that, we will see this emerging kind of structure. And I liked that uh, project management type of chart we just saw before, which is great to kind of give the structure to us. But all of the, again, product management people need to understand that we're working with kind of peer-to-peer -peer environment, right? So like a lot of teams and their structures are emerging bottom up, right? So when we're thinking through from like top to bottom approach, we don't need to lose that and just kind of eliminate some of the, things that are forming imagine right now. So I think it's great to have, again, as Arthur pointed out, to show the structures and as an example, right? But then just kind of like see what actually works in the real world in the real environment right now. Uh, again, given that majority of people are mostly <laughs> technical, uh, they're kind of more Kegel oriented. So they like Kegel kernels, right? So it's at this point, I think it's not even possible to come up with a good solid structure for, you know, uh, research pipeline. We just need to see what works for different teams. And from management perspective, just to encourage cross-pollination of how those processes works. And so far, the one common topic for everybody I talked to was just this. They have input data. They want to produce some output of it. And that's it. What happens within is 
kind of like there is no structure to it, common structure. And, and, I, um, and I think those are good points. Uh, uh, I'm a data science guy myself. The, um, <clears throat> I think that, and I've looked through a lot of the notebooks and seen a lot of the output. And I think what we're trying to do is set up a framework where people can pursue different paths but we have some mechanism of taking that output and deciding whether we can use it or uh, incorporate yeah. it into the overall. If we don't set some framework up, then people are going to be kind of spinning off on all kinds of paths, creating results, but we can't do anything with the results because we have no way to take that output and incorporate it into the overall. So maybe we, we could take this offline. Anybody else that wants to join us can yeah. join us. I mean, we're, uh, we're just trying to put a little structure to kind of help frame up that creativity, but not at all to stifle it. Yeah, and I've, I've been operating primarily on the principle of, you know, I'm going to take decision and showcase some structure. If it sucks, people will complain and tell me and we can adjust. So kind of like taking the decision and then uh, seeing the, the feedback on it. And I, everyone is encouraged to do the same. So I just uh, wanted to add a comment. So um I, I'm not a data scientist, so I've not been involving myself in the conversation so much. I'm uh, from academia. Um, but, but I perceive that there's a lot of people on the channel with uh, technical skills who want to do something and are sort of waiting to be given something to attack. Um, and I know there's been lots of discussion about the um, organizational structure and how to form into groups. But what I haven't seen is very much sort of discussion of the technical vision, you know, like uh, this is the the outline of how I think we should approach this task. And these are the technical steps that we should, uh, you know, think about pursuing. And not everybody will agree on that vision, but, but it would be nice to see a few people sort of declare their scientific vision or their technical vision for how some of these questions can be addressed. Yeah. Because and one we're, of the we're at people that struggling so right much now. is that they're so broad, the questions, I guess, and nobody knows where to, to start. Yeah, so we are at that stage right now. We are attempting to solve for that today. So hopefully we, we have uh, teams and lead researchers assigned for, for those specific tasks by tomorrow. Uh, so if I may interject just for a second, um, I'm sorry that this has taken so long. I wanted my data to be done running uh, days ago. Um, but uh, so we're attacking this from two different uh, angles. There's the domain near area expertise uh, people who are virologists and biologists who are going to help us understand uh, what data we need to get out of the text. Um, and the thing that I've been working on is this huge notebook that is really like a standardized way of extracting all possible metadata from the text. Um, other people have done bio named entity recognition and uh, scraping articles, which is great. Um, but the, the what I'm doing at the moment is breaking every single article down by sentence, uh, giving it a vectorized representation. And up until now, there's been a problem with the vectorized outputs because COVID and uh, SARS COVID 2 they, they don't exist in the vocabulary of like the word to vec and fast text models that people have been using. So um, I, I gave vectors to my models for those particular synonyms for COVID. Um, the vectorized outputs will be available probably tonight within the next. 10 hours or something. Um, and everything is labeled by what section it came from, what paper it came from, whether it's a named entity, it has the vector, um, the, the end and uh, beginning character. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention was the, the other reason that we haven't gotten good results from uh, the, the data, uh, vectorized data before is because the vectorized data included uh, acronyms and acronyms do not have the same vector representation as their full text counterparts. So. I've also taken care of that. So the, my notebook has all of the pre-processing, all of the processing, and then you can throw that at the machine learning people. Um, and it's also modular so that we can be able to incorporate new data as it's being dumped into this notebook, and then I can upload it uh, iteratively. So it shouldn't be an issue after today, fingers crossed, so. To, uh, well, you know, I, to the points being discussed here, uh, the, um, we, we have created two channels and we really want to have two teams that we're calling the macro ML team and the macro domain team. Mm -hmm. And those are exactly to kind of provide this uh, guidance framework structure, however you want to define it to, to make sure that all this work, uh, you know, we have set out a vision and we've got a way for incorporating this. So we need a couple volunteers, probably a couple leaders on each would be great um, to sort of raise their hands to say, let me, you know, contribute my own work, what other people have done, and help us 
say, you know, set up a structure so that we are kind of optimizing the output of folks. Uh, and then they can take a break into sub teams if we want to do, you know, specific text analysis or uh, some sort of scoring, or we want to have multiple scores and then average those some way. I mean, so each one of those can spin off a whole bunch of tasks, but there should be some structure. And so like, if you've got this vector representation of all the text, we don't want somebody running out and doing something different. And then we're going to have a different set of inputs into the models and a different set of outputs. So at this point, we need a couple of volunteers to lead each of those. Uh, groups to just sort of help put some structure and uh, and then from there we can maybe make some sub teams out of each one of those so, so call, it, call out for volunteers to, to lead up those macro teams well Brandon your um, your deliverables uh, are I see that as as really the starting point for these um, four research teams is that correct yeah uh, the, 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 yeah that's the assumption um, yeah. okay so once we get some trial boards created, um, we can kind of get a, a starting pack together for them. Um, I've just got a, like a, a Google like workbook started, um, just uh, that people can start with this, their subtests in each workbook. Um, so we can link that from um, each trial board. And then if we can um, have um, I think there's a fifth, uh, there's a fifth GitHub uh, created um, for the shared assets. Um, if we have like a fifth Trello board, we could also link um, each one of the um, individual boards back to the fifth one for the shared assets. That might be a way to approach it. Yeah, so I'm sharing the screen, uh, I believe with the document that you've created on risk factors. I think yeah. you know this could be the, that intermediary document that we can uh, work through, and basically once we create Trello boards and Slack channels, we can utilize this and kind of formulate uh, more specific uh, objectives and, and structure in place. So thank you and for one, putting that together. That's amazing. One one thing I want to throw out there is I think that we have sort of. Uh, representatives for two different approaches that we're trying to take and that that's good that we need to actually to, to work with both of those so I think Steve for example you're, you're coming you have a fantastic mind for figuring out how we can do some top-down pieces and I think Anton has some amazing ideas in terms of how we do that bottom-up piece and I think the nature of the kind of organization that this is and the way that people are joining it uh, means that we have to be using both so what we're trying to do is figure out how to crystallize out that top-down structure that can happen we have the four tasks we have the people who are directly supporting those tasks and we have to uh, sort of shield that piece um, from from the rest of the chaos that may be there, um, but that um, encouraging and empowering individuals to get together to form their own small groups to be working on other pieces uh, is great it's for people to be following their own initiative as well. And then the key part that the overall admin uh, has to do is we have to weave those together. We have to figure out how to make sure that functional useful information is flowing between those those two sort of sets the more organic and the more the more uh, hierarchical pieces um, as well as we can then help do that for those pieces of sourcing in the information we need and getting the outputs out and that's that's a piece i also want to quickly talk about i think one of the, the things we need soon is to start getting a collection of all of the different um, even the small little bits of output that we're, we're beginning to see with there's there's some some pretty neat stuff going on um, and starting to put that out there, even if we're, we're labeling it as tentative, because um, that's a great way to sort of stand up a little bit of a flare so that other people who might be able to get involved or might be able to support or may have critique that would be useful are able to see what we're up to and, and support it there. Yeah, I just put start getting a collection of different outputs, documents, notebooks, results, right? It's one of the, the tasks. Good. Um, I think it makes sense. I, I agree this kind of the top down approach and bottom to top approach uh, haven't been done in a such, you know, fast, fast paced, uh, fully distributed environment. So there is no an easy, there is no easy ans answer for that. But I believe we can uh, figure something out. Um, so let's let's summarize the next steps. Um, the, the number one, start getting a collection of different outputs, uh, documents, notebooks, results. Um, setting up uh, individual channels and uh, process for team assembly. 
Um, I'm sure that there are a lot of people that are not on the call that could potentially lead those individual tasks. So need to figure out how to uh, make that communication work, especially with the time zone. Um, then setting up a process for um, technical versus informational layers, uh, Trello versus GitHub for specific tasks. Um, anything else that could be formulated as a task actionable one for today? Yeah, one of the things that we'll do shortly also is we can, to get that bottom up side flowing better, um, we're going to put out a call um, once we've done a little bit more of the, the team creation and getting people onto those uh, for a general check-in from everybody to get a sense of where they're at, where they're blocked on, do they have ideas that, uh, that they're trying to pursue um, so we can get a little bit more of a sense of, of, of who's around and some of that organic formation can happen. Okay, general check-in process. I have a quick question, Tyler here. Um, just in terms of a general deliverable, I'm a bit confused. Like I know Kaggle has 10 tasks listed. That seems a bit spread out. Are we trying to like give the subject matter experts like a Power BI dashboard at the end of the day that they're happy with? Type of thing? Good question. I've actually raised a question about the you know data visualization and if anyone has experience with Tableau or like any other platforms that could be a little bit easier uh, to use and could be integrated into GitHub Colab pipeline, please uh, let us know. Because I, I do think that as much as um, Mike is helping us with this initial stuff, like basic similarity between papers and tasks, it's kind of like a, a very bottleneck process right now. He does a lot of it manually. And the sooner we can figure out the process that, uh, you know, most of technical people uh, could join the better. If you have some friends that work in data visualization space, please invite them. Um, it, it feels like a necessity because obviously all those researchers and medical experts won't look at, you know, raw notebook results. We need something to represent results in an easy to digest form. So I see that as almost a um, separate work effort um, in itself, the delivery piece um, that we can, we can get a, a work group around. Um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen the Power BI solution and I've also seen um, something um, that's an HTML with like drop downs and, and served that way. Those are the two things that I've seen so far. Um, so if we could start, I, I agree that that would be um, kind of next step is to get ahead of, you know, the output of the individual work groups and um, determine uh, possible solutions. Maybe there's more than one that we can serve up there. Sounds good. And I'll, I'll take a couple of minutes to go through other things uh, that we're kind of uh, struggling with. And those are primarily non-technical. And, you know, we're, we're reaching this stage where we're going to get some results soon, or at least, you know, will require some input from medical experts. Like if we're talking about risk factors, obviously, like we have no clue how to tie that available data to all the, you know, pieces of the subtasks. So I do think it's critical for us to have some people on board that are not technical, that can identify a list of experts that would benefit the group. And overall momentum. Uh, that's the task that has been in to do for quite some time. I mean, like, Arthur, I it's a little bit it's a little bit problematic because of uh, I started to research on the papers and everything that is available. Okay, and uh, here are they saying uh, uh, the uh, the uh, it's not that there is no enough data, but there are uh, the things are not like kind of well established like. What people know, like what scientists know at the moment, it's uh, something regarding uh, correlation with age, uh, probably with some um, uh, life level factors, uh, with uh, diabetes, heart diseases, vessel diseases, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, pulmonary diseases. But that's pretty much everything is like not for sure at the moment. So it's yeah. kind of like shaky area. 
totally understood. I think the output for this task, for this group of tasks is having at least five, 10, uh, you know, medical experts that are on Slack and we could, you know, bring them into separate conversations, calls, and just, you know, have some real conversation with people that understand what this data is about and what are the tasks about, which is even more important. So identifying the list of experts is um, ultimately a way to get those 10 experts. Um, so we need also there is a task of a list of authors with emails and expertise. I think we've hit a roadblock with a lot of uh, missing data. If there's someone who has experience with uh, enriching data in general, please jump into that task and help Ben, I think, was working on it. Um, and then there has to be someone who has communication skills and maybe Maya, you can help with this, basically a template letter to send to the most relevant authors based on specific tasks. Because even, even right now with the current uh, Power BI visualization, we already have the cluster of most relevant authors when it comes to tasks like risk factors. So at least we can you know, send them some form of communication and tell them, Here's what we're working on. Like, please join us and let us know what we should be working on within these specific subtasks. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, I have a quick question yeah. if, before we go. So, uh, collecting different outputs in notebooks is a task item, but I was wondering if we already have some sort of framework in place for how to start submitting those things if we have teams that have them. I'm not aware so of the process, but if someone has, please let us know. Okay. So for now, it looks like people are just dumping things in Slack and putting things on Trello cards. Yeah, so what I've done uh, when we created that basic similarity yeah. task, uh, I've gone through notebooks at that time and just added them as checklist items with that uh, card. Uh, that was basically the only process that existed at that time. If you, any, right? Uh, if you can yeah. um, kind of lead this uh, process and create some structure, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, especially on the Trello board, there's just like so many cards now, and I think a lot of them have a lot of overlapping uh, content. So if if you're willing to go through that and sort of give it a, a better or maybe hierarchical structure or or cluster things together, it'd be a lot easier and manageable. I think. I agree. So regarding Trello board, I think we just need to give like a card blanche to like people just to kind of start. Uh, if you see that you can improve the messaging of a Trello card, just go and do it. I have a feeling that some of the cards will just technically will quick, quick and dirty project of just like, let's create a card. Then there is some action going on, but then nobody bothers to actually kind of clean it up. So for example, some of the Trello cards are simply copy paste in chats from Slack, just kind of, okay, it's worse to pursue this, you know, as a separate task and go with it. But then nobody kind of bothers to let me reformulate it. So it's kind of good description, good everything. And I think some of the non-technical people who can definitely kind of contribute already just to simply clarify this type of action. Yeah, uh, I've been doing that a little bit and any assistance that you guys can provide or anybody else can provide is really appreciated. Kind of put a call out on um, Slack this morning for that. Um, I think we're getting more structure behind it. And I, I also think that once we break out into new boards, we'll see a lot more structure behind it. All right. Sounds good. Do, does anyone uh, have any other questions? Yeah, I've, uh, I, I have. Um... Can you hear me? Yep. Um, I am uh, going to be talking to somebody I know. <clears throat> I know at AI two tomorrow, who's been involved with the with releasing the data set and and um, knows about uh, like the different versions that are going to be coming out. Uh, so if anybody has anything you want me to ask her, uh, you can let me know that, and I can report back about uh, what she says. Can we get computational resources? From AI yeah. too. Yeah. I can. So here's here's the problem. I I spoke with uh, Anthony CEO of Kaggle. He uh, asked me to write an email with the basic <laughs> task, 
to Google. Uh, I did that, he forwarded it to people. Uh, I also sent direct emails to uh, people that are responsible for you know, early, site, early stage uh, credits uh, at Google. It seems like the bureaucratic machine and you know, corporate environment is way too slow to react efficiently. I think we're gonna get responses from all of those places by the end of the week. We just have to be patient. And there is a document that Daniel created on all the organizations that we should be working with. And there are people that are uh, you know, responsible for that. If you are reaching out or working with people like AI2, uh, Jason, please go ahead and add that on the sheet and just uh, put a status of what's the, the current state of that communication. So I'm a, I'm a student at the University of Washington and there are some pretty substantial computational uh, resources available to us as students. And I, and they, I remember getting an email recently specifically saying uh, that they were um, going to be opening this up for, for uh, coronavirus research. So, and um, is that, that a shared good. Google uh, environment or is that local? Uh, excuse me? Is that cloud environment that they have or is that? I would have to, I would have to be uh, coordinating it um, or, some, or a different student at, at the university. Um, but if, if somebody really needed uh, supercomputer resources, that might be one avenue to go down is to collaborate with me. Uh, and be able to, to submit jobs on there and, and such. I do know my way around the, the high performance computing uh, resources a little bit. I've, I've used it before. I think that's fantastic. And even for the non-cloud stuff. So Jason, I might get in touch with you. I'm working out at uh, University of British Columbia and I'd love to see if we can work to get both of the universities engaging with their resources a little bit um, and then figure out, we, we can figure out after how we best plug the people who need those in. Yeah, that sounds great. Do we know whether someone submitted a request on the, the link that I just put into the chat? Uh, which it one? says tour. It's for uh, for cloud resources for Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. It's, it's on the ch the chat, the Zoom chat. Oh. Uh, is there any way that we could throw those into the um, organizations to liaise with these? Basically, there anyone can put in an organization why we should liaise with them, um, what the status of that is. Is it something someone's already doing? Do we have a my person to talk to with them, or whether it's just something we should do? And that'll that'll help us coordinate. All yeah, that. Tina, I don't think anyone did that. Please go ahead, add it to the that sheet, and if you can c uh, communicate with them, please do. Okay, where is that sheet? I'll just po post it uh, into the chat in just one sec. Okay. So I think this is another team that we need, it's kind of a technology infrastructure DevOps team to help coordinate uh, how we're doing this, including the GitHub sites, uh, the documentation sites, um, I mean, we're using Trello, and then our computational resources. So uh, I think we're putting out a call for another couple of volunteers to lead that effort and try and coordinate all these activities. So we have a central place at which we're making these requests at least we have somebody that, a couple people that kind of know everything that's going on in the central place to, to manage this. So uh, one more team where I think we need a couple leaders to, to coordinate. So to expand on what Steve was saying is essentially what the team also can do is, I mean, we could try to approach AWS Google Cloud that way. I know that, for example, if I'm a startup, I would like to get some, you know, initial server credits from Amazon. I need to be affiliated with some incubate accelerator program, right? So in our case, what we will see, right? We have dedicated teams and some of the teams, let's say want to do something with huge neural nets. So they need like a, you know, huge cluster of GPUs or something. So they act as that startup that requires initial credits. And now we as a kind of organization could be like this incubator that that team is affiliated with so they can go and request. So in terms of how we could approach AWS, Google Cloud guys, it's not just simply, oh, we're a team, we need just computational resources. They ask us how much we say, we don't know yet or something, right? We could kind of try to apply to be like an organization that now when people need resources within our team, they kind of request it as being affiliated with Corona Y as, you know, this type of organization. And uh, I would assume that in order to get that type of kind of 
organization status within AWS, etc. You need to show that, you know, we kind of validate what people are going to use it for, right? So we're not just giving away this type of access, right? So that type of unit could kind of be responsible for that and actually be very impactful in what we do. Just yeah, I agree. Two cents. Yeah, I agree as well. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Sounds like a great call. I'll be posting the follow-up uh, tasks, uh, which are uh, five tasks. Uh, obviously, there are much more, and there are plenty of things that admin and program management Slack has to discuss, but uh, I'll post those as a summary to this call, and I'll upload the recording for those who missed it. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good day, and stay healthy. Thank you, you too. Yeah. Bye. Bye.